Hi, we're back with part two of the do-it-yourself Android tablet car stereo. Uh, on the first part, part one, we talked about selecting a tablet and how to get the correct OTG cable and unit working, which we have connected here. It's the lava sink we talked about in part one. Um, it's being powered and then feeding the power to the tablet. Now, we are going to talk today about getting your audio output out of the tablet to use with an external amplifier. So, what you're going to need to do that is you're going to need, this is like a, a sound card slash digital to audio converter that will work with the OTG unit. And this is available on Amazon. I think this one was 10 or $12. Um, they have a wide variety. I got this one with the volume control just for, for doing testing. You can buy one without a volume control uh, because you'll be controlling the volume with the tablet itself. So if you simply plug this in to the USB port on the OTG cable, or OTG hub we'll call it, this unit will start functioning with no drivers just right away. And then what you want to do is you want to take a 3.5 millimeter stereo mini jack to RCA, very common cable, plug it into the headphone output of the converter. And then over here I have a small little 12 volt amplifier that I'm using for testing, um, which takes the place of the car stereo amplifier that will eventually be inside the Yamaha Wolverine. So now we are connected. When you plug this USB unit in, it will turn off the internal speakers on the tablet so that you can feed the audio out to a separate amplifier. Now, you'll also have your volume control on the tablet, which will raise up, and we'll control it for now just from, from here. So, I have this video queued up. I'd like to play you some music or a music video, but they'll shut my YouTube video if they find copyright material. So we'll just use this. And you'll be able to see the, video, the audio will start up in just a few seconds. This is a Raptor that I had restored that I showed running. Here we go. All right, so you can hear the audio, I'm raising and lowering it, or I can raise it and lower it from the tablet. So now you've got your, your audio output that can go into your amplifier. If you're going to use a four channel amplifier, you can put a Y cable on the RCA outputs. You won't have fading capabilities, but we can talk about that a little later if you want fading capabilities. So that is the first way to get audio out to your amplifier. Now, being that I'm going to be in a side-by-side, -side, driving along, bouncy roads, um, trying to use the volume control on the outer edge will become a little difficult. Uh, you can get some apps that will give you a little better on-screen volume control. But as I searched around, I found a couple of units that basically give you an external volume control. I bought a couple of them. I bought this one from DB Link. And again, it's a knob. These are Bluetooth volume controls. So what I found was the, the DB Link works almost like a spring left and right. It doesn't give you that infinite rotary control. Um, it does work little more difficult to use sound quality is good with it but then I found this infinity model the infinity INFBC4 now this unit is really nice I contacted infinity to get the specifications of the unit and they kinda aren't sure what version of Bluetooth it has um, they told me it has SBC for the audio codec, which is okay. I wish they had put a little newer codec into it. And it gives you about one and a half volts RMS on the output, which 
I wish was a little higher. But as you can see from this unit, it, it's very, very nice, very well built. It's got an infinite volume knob. You've got track up, track down, play and pause. And then if you press it in the center, it will turn this unit off and on. It will automatically connect to the Bluetooth of a tablet when you turn the tablet on or when you start this up. Um, the wiring on it, you have your power and ground for 12 volts. And the good thing is, is you also get a turn on lead for your amplifier, for your car audio amplifier, so that you can have it trigger that. Now, the one thing that I didn't like about this unit was I thought I could just use this as just a volume control to control this unit. So while you're bouncing around going down the road, you actually have physical large buttons to control this unit. But all it does is it controls only the Bluetooth media volume up and down, which comes out of this RCA connector, which is where you're using your SBC codec. Now, yes, being in a side-by-side -side, out in the woods, very noisy environment. So as far as sound quality, I'm not going to lose much because you wouldn't be able to hear it over the motor and everything anyway. So doing some testing with this unit, I have found that it performs pretty well. Like I said, I wish they had a better, a newer Bluetooth uh, audio codec. But, you know, this is what they, what they have. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the Bluetooth on the tablet. I'll bring this back up. Okay. And then we're going to give it power and ground. And right now it's searching for the Bluetooth and it has connected. So now if we turn it up, let me put the volume. On. You'll see that I now have control of the volume with this unit that outputs to the amplifier and also provides me with a turn on circuit for the amplifier. So for use in a um, ATV or side-by-side, -side, this will work out very well for the needs that I have. Um, it solves a few problems. One, trying to use the, the volume control that's built into the unit. Um, the downside to this is the steps in volume, as you can see, one click. Let me see if I can get it. One notch up is pretty loud. The second notch up isn't bad. The third notch up goes up a lot. So you don't really have fine, fine controls. Now, you can adjust that through the gains on the amplifier so that it won't get as loud so fast and, and other things that we can talk about later during the installation. But that method for delivering the audio output to the amplifier as well as end up having a nice control for when you're in your bumpy environments not having to rely on trying to get to the tablet this is what I'm gonna go with inside the side-by-side -side for controls so those were your two options in a car you probably just wanna go with the simple uh, D to A converter um, or sometimes they call it an external sound card or but that would probably be your choice in a car. Now you can get other apps. We won't talk about those now until we get to the installation. You can buy apps that give you the face similar to a car stereo. There's a lot of free ones on Google Play, the Play Store, as well as um, there's some that you can pay for. I've tried about three or four of them, including the most expensive one you can pay for. They really didn't benefit me or help me in any way, so I'm kind of like on the fence about them now. I'll see what I can come up with at the end of all this testing as far as a good interface for the front. Um, so that's it for video two. Video two was just about how to get your audio output into your external amplifier. I will add one more small thing. We talked about the voltage output. If the voltage output ends up being too low when we do our installation in the Wolverine, 
you can add something like this. This is a line output amplifier, and this is specifically for that reason. It would go between your head unit and your amplifier and allow you to raise the gains on, think of it like a mini amplifier just for the initial signal, and then you have your main amplifier that goes to your speakers. So this will give you a higher uh, voltage into the amplifier if you needed it, if it's too quiet. But until we do the install, I won't know if I need this, so this will be further down the road. So that's it for part two. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to get into adding an AM-FM radio. Thanks.